everyone. Welcome to Jube School Live Online. My name is Karen and I am the Cultural Development Specialist at the Jubilee Auditorium. We are absolutely thrilled to be able to bring you Jube School Live and online. Hi, Welcome to Jube School Live <laughs> Online. Hi. Uh, my name is Carly McKee. I'm the Community Engagement engagement coordinator here at the Jube. We're so excited to have all of you here on our YouTube live feed here with Mandy Stobo. Uh, let's just get right to it. Allow me to introduce to you visual artist, Jube school artist, all around fantastic human, Mandy Stobo. Mandy, take uh, it away. Thank you so much. Uh, well, welcome everyone. I'm so happy you're here. Uh, Jube School is one of my favorite things in the world. So I, I just feel so very blessed that I get to be here and teach you guys some bad portrait techniques today. I know uh, it's been a bit of a weird time. It's been a bit of a hard time. And I know that art is very therapeutic and also is very fun. So we're gonna, we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna explore some feelings and we're gonna make some bad portraits. So before I tell you a bit about myself, I wanna kind of go over the supplies that you guys will need. And while I, while I tell you a bit about my story, you can run around and try and find them. So what we will need is some paint, watercolor paints. If you don't have watercolor paints, that's okay. You can use pencil crayons or crayons or any kind of coloring that you have at home. We also need the best tool in the world, a Sharpie and we're gonna need some paper. So that's gonna be for your portraits. And then for the, for the projects before we do our special portrait, we're gonna need one object. I'm gonna use a box, but you can use anything in your house that you can find. And then the next one, I'm gonna use a bear. So a stuffed animal, if you've got that kicking around would be great to find. If not, just something with a bit more complex shape. So that's kind of all you guys are gonna need. So while I tell you my story, you can try and find all those things and let me just get right to my story. So my name is Mandy Stobo. I'm a visual artist. I am the creator of Bad Portraits. I do a lot of large contemporary paintings. I do a lot of work in virtual reality and augmented reality. I am a performer an illustrator and I work a lot in design. So how did I get here? Well, it was kind of a lot like where we are right now. I was very young and I had a baby and I didn't really have anything else. <laughs> so there's my little guy. I didn't have a job. I didn't have much of a, any education. I had a lot of life experience. I had gone through a lot of awful things that taught me a lot of lessons, but I didn't really know what I was gonna do. So the world was my oyster, right? No, not at all. This was more my reality. No bees, no honey, no work, no money. But like a situation like we're in right now, I wanted to really create something. So I, I started a list and I, I started to think of what I did have. So what I did have was safety and I hope that all of you have safety. And if not, we are here for you at Jube School. So reach out and I had optimism and I had an idea to just create and make something for my family. So I started thinking about art and I really, I didn't, I wasn't very good at being precious with my art. I liked it to be just kind of raw. And I found this, and this is the three laws of art. One, create, the worst it can do is suck. Two, create again, bad art happens to good artists. And three, just create. Art is cheaper than therapy. So anytime you guys are bored right now or don't know what to do, I suggest strongly just grab a piece of paper and start doodling. You will feel better in a minute. So at the same time, I was making some paintings that were pretty, pretty dark and angsty. And I just, I really didn't want to put that out into the world. I wanted to see if I could highlight joy and happiness in art instead of just these moody, sad kind of works. So this was kind of where I was before I started thinking about how can I put value in joy and humor? So art should comfort the disturbed and disturb the comfortable. I was like, I don't know if that's kind of where I wanna go with things. I really wanna see if I can spread smiles and, and just inspire anyone to create. So at the same time that this was happening, a wonderful thing called Twitter just came out and it was brand new. So timing was very lucky. And I thought, oh my gosh, I'm a single mom. I don't really have a community, but I do have this tool 
And on Twitter, you can connect to anyone. So I started looking at Twitter and seeing what all these Twitter accounts were doing and trying to figure out what I could do with it. And what I realized was that all of these social media platforms had profile pictures. And so I started stealing profile pictures from anyone I thought was doing great things in the world or funny things or kind things just to try and do a portrait of them and send it back to them as a thank you. And that's the beginning of Bad Portraits. So I called it Bad Portraits because a few reasons. If I said it was bad, it kind of lowered the pressure on my end, but it also lowered the pressure on the face that I was drawing. I really, really believe that our flaws or what we think are our flaws are actually our beauty. And so I wanted to really highlight that in my work. So I started stealing them from anyone that I was thought I I loved or thought was just incredible and and started doing a lot of celebrities and Tina Fey and all of that. And then one day I decided to do Adam Sandberg uh, from or Andy Sandberg from The Lonely Island. So I kind of I sent him this and I said, you know, here's bad portrait time. I think you guys are doing great great things. Um, here's a bad portrait for you. And he immediately sent me back, cool, but where's Kip, which was his other member of his band, Lonely Island. And so for some reason I had 45 minutes, my son was sleeping and, and I could actually make a portrait. So I immediately made him one of all three of them. And I said, bad portrait time, here he is, sorry about that. And then I also sent him another of Kip and also 17 others of just Kip. And so he started retweeting that and kind of sharing it with the world. And very soon after I started getting orders from around the world, from celebrities that I loved and started getting into national magazines and, and all kinds of things. And uh, McLean's in Canada did an article on this phenomenon that was happening on Twitter. And by that Christmas, I had over 3000 orders and I could provide for my little guy. So I know that we're all in a very weird spot right now with, uh, with everything that's happening in the world, but I wanna just really share today that anything is possible and that we have this time right now to really create and be exactly what we wanna be. So let's, let's try and do that. So I'll just show you a few more of these moments that Bad Portraits has taken me. So there's our wonderful Mary Nenshi, there's Tom Cochran, I think you guys know this guy. We see him every day at 11. <laughs> and then recently I was able to do the Canada's Walk of Fame with some wonderful uh, celebrities, wonderful Canadians. That's Will Arnett, Alessia Cara, and there's um, Marc Messier. And most recently I've been able to honor our incredible leaders during this pandemic. Um, all of our wonderful, wonderful chief uh, medical officers across Canada. Thank you so much for everything you're doing. It has been such an honor to be able to create for you. So there's a bit of my background. Who wants to create some art? All of you, everyone, yay. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do guys is we're gonna get a piece of paper ready and we're gonna get our Sharpie out. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna change the camera so you're just seeing the table and then you guys can see what we're doing, all right? So as you can see, Here's my hands, here's all my supplies. We're gonna grab a Sharpie here and we're gonna first do the object that we found in our house. I'm gonna pick this box just to kind of give you guys the, the for a little rundown of rules for bad portraits. Now, before we start, I want to tell you about contour drawing because that's essentially what we're gonna be doing today. And then we just get more complex with our shapes as we go on. So contour drawing is actually so, so important. I might actually put myself on here. Contour drawing is so, so important because, um, because it actually helps you change your brain pathways. So with contour drawing, there's two rules. You have to look at your object and not look at your page and you have to keep your pen on the page. So because you're looking at the object, as your eyes move across the object, your hand is drawing the shape. And because you're doing that with your eyes, you're actually helping your brain change its pathways a bit. So anytime you're feeling anxiety or stress or anything at all, this is a really good exercise to do. 
I really, really can't tell you how, how helpful it's been for me. And, and it's fun too. So let's get to it. So as you can see, we've got our paper and our pen and our object. So just like I told you before, we're gonna take those rules. I'm only gonna look at this box and I'm not gonna look at the page and the pen will not lift off the page. So I'm gonna start on the corner of the box and as my eye moves down the box, I'm gonna move my hand. So as you can see, I'm not really looking. I'm gonna go over to the side and it's looking exactly like a perfect box, right? But I didn't lift my pen. So as you guys can see, it's all one continuous line, right? So there's a box. I know you guys are like boring box, but it's actually gonna look really cool when you paint it. So here we go. The next step for bad portraits is you see all these little overlapping shapes that you've made with your continuous line. You're gonna just pick a few of those and color them in with a Sharpie. So I'm just, and you can do cross hatching or any kind of patterns that you would like just to bring out your drawing, make it a little bit unique for you. So there you go. That's kind of what I'm gonna do with that box. Now the third step to bad portraits is the paint. So I wanna to talk to you guys about complementary colors. Complementary colors are the best they're they're like having the best friend in the world they bring out the best in each other so that's what we're going to play with for our first one we're going to pick one pair of complementary colors and we're going to paint our box or our object and see how the colors interact so for those that do know complementary colors are the opposite colors on the color wheel and so the the pairs are purple and yellow red and green and blue and orange let me show you here so as you can see, there's all of our color combinations. And so I want you guys to pick one of these pairs, red and green, orange and blue, or yellow and purple. So we're gonna get a bunch of paint on our brush here. And I'm gonna pick orange and blue because I just love it so much. So then we're gonna start to paint. I like to paint on the edges out with one color and get a lot of pigment on my brush and then kind of wash it in. You see that? And then I'm gonna do the same with the, the complementary color. So I like to get a lot of pigment there just so you can kind of blend the wash on the inside. And now a wash just means you're adding more water to your brush and blending the, the water or the color. Okay, so now the fourth step is splatter. It's my favorite step. It's the most fun. If you have kids with a lot of energy, it's an amazing thing to do. Watercolor comes out of everything. There's nothing to be worried about. Give them a piece of paper and some watercolor and let them go at her. So all you do is you take a bunch of paint on your brush and you want to hold it up and kind of just tap it. Now I love splatter because I really believe that it takes your energy and it puts it in on the page in a different way. So each of our splatter is unique, just like each of our lines are unique. So we're going to talk a bit more about that in a bit about how my mark making is different than your mark making and that's what makes it beautiful and that's where the truth is and that's where the value is and so the more that you can let go with who you are and just let yourself make your mark the more the more truth is there and the more value and beauty is there and it's it's just my favorite thing to see so there you go that's our first project now doesn't that look like a cool abstract painting if that was on a very large canvas i think we would all be very impressed so there's number one so now we're going to go to number two so i want you guys to grab your stuffed animal or whatever your complex object is so we're going to just try that again before we get to our self portraits okay so i'm just going to reset here you guys uh oh there's jerry seinfeld sorry he snuck in there you guys um just reset to grab another piece of paper and find your other object 
as you can see, I'm going to go to a larger piece of paper here. And I know that from teaching this uh, for many years, that sometimes we get scared of going bigger. So we're going to conquer that fear today. I'm going to try and show you guys how you can go big. I know that a lot of us, you know, really like to keep into this tight little space, but we really want to try and use the whole page. So the other thing with contour drawing and with this whole thing is without thinking about it, you're automatically showing your style and your authentic self. So once we're done today, you're going to have three projects. And when you have those side by side, you're going to see your authentic self and your authentic style and your mark. And it's going to be so beautiful and it's not going to be trying to be perfect or anything else. And I just can't even wait to see it. So we're going to just put this over here. All right. So as you can see, I've got this teddy bear. Is everybody ready for, for number two? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to lie him down so you guys can see him. If you don't have an object, you can just use him. Let's pop his head up a little bit. Okay. Can you guys see that? So we're going to do the same thing that we did with the box. So I'm, I like to start at the top of the head, even, especially when I'm doing people, but I start at the top of the head and as my eye moves around their ear, into their nose and eye and around and up and then down. My hand is, is moving as my eye follows the shapes. So that's what we're gonna do right now. So I'm gonna start at the top of the head and a good way to use your whole page is by starting at the top and, go, and being bold. Don't be scared of making large lines. So I'm gonna start up here and I'm not looking at my object. So I'm gonna go, I'm looking at his ear or I'm not looking at the page in it. So I'm looking at his ear. Oh, I'm going to go up into his nose. And as you can see, I'm not lifting my pen. And he's looking like exactly like a stuffed animal bear. Right, guys? I want to see yours too. So now I'm going down into his scarf. He's got a stripe on his scarf, but I can't even tell if my stripes are on his scarf. And that's okay, guys, because this is all about letting go and finding your marks. How cool is it that we're all just such beautiful individuals and the other thing about this COVID that I've been thinking about is that we're all going through it together but we're all having such unique experiences and how interesting is that so I think I forgot his eyes so I'm going to go back up but I'm not sure so there you go there's my contour quick drawing of a bear so as you can see it's perfect no just kidding it's not perfect at all so but it does use the whole page that's what we want and it, I never lifted the pen. So there's tons of these overlapping shapes everywhere. You see? So again, the second step to bad portraits is finding those shapes and filling them in. I like to start with the eyes because it brings them a little bit to life. And then I can talk to them and sing lullabies. No, just kidding. <laughs> I wanna hear how you guys are doing too. So please leave some comments about you know what's been going on in your life since uh since this has changed and i really want to see your drawings i can't wait to see what you guys do and i really really cannot suggest enough to keep contour drawing anytime you're feeling like your feelings are out of control or life is is too hard at the moment just grab an object closest to you grab a pen grab a piece of paper and just do this exercise a few times and I promise you, you will feel a lot better. So as you can see, I'm just filling in some of those overlapping uh, shapes that my line has made. And it really just brings out the drawing. So we're gonna just go in here. All right. So now for this one, I want you guys to think about one of your complementary color pairs, and I want you to introduce one more color. Now, the reason why we're not going crazy with color right away is because I just want you guys to take a moment and see how color plays with each other. Every time you introduce a new color into anything, just like, you know, just like life, it changes it quite a lot and it changes the feeling of the piece and kind of uh, everything about it. So I just love 
you know, it's all experimenting with color and, and really seeing how that relationship works. I'm just gonna quickly get some new water for my brushes and you guys can feel free to do the same thing. So I can't wait to see what you guys are painting, whether it's bears or cars or coffee mugs or what. I'm very, very keen. So if you guys can, please send all of your stuff to me at So I want you guys to pick one of these pairs again and then introduce an, a third color. Are you guys hearing me okay? I'm just worried that you guys can't, oh, you can. Okay, good, 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 good. So now we're gonna paint our bear. So we're gonna grab those three colors. I'm gonna do a bit of purple and yellow and red, I think. So we're just gonna get a lot of pigment on our brush. I sure like painting with you guys. But please, while you're doing this, we wanna see at Jube School everything that you're doing. So send everything to Jube School if you can. So as you can see, I'm getting a lot of pigment on my brush. I like to go to the edges and then I kind of just wash, wash it in. So I'm gonna introduce red to this painting just to see the red and the yellow. So as you can see, it's a totally different vibe than yellow and purple. And I just think that's so cool that just introducing one tiny change like that can change your work. So there you go, you got a lot of, so these are the fast and dirty bad portraits. This is just to get us loosened up and ready for our self portrait. So as you can see, if you don't have paint and you can do this with crayon and uh, any art supplies that you do have, you won't be able to splatter very easily, but that's okay, we can leave that for later. So then you wanna take the paint on your brush and splatter away. My little guy's looking a little concerned, but that's totally okay too. <laughs> so there you go. If you do get pooling of water, it's totally okay to take a paper towel and dab it a little bit. It doesn't wreck the painting, it just removes that water. So as you can see, we've done two now and we're very close to being ready for our self portrait. So if everyone at home has a phone or a mirror, I'd love you to go get that. I pulled up, or I took a picture of myself just before this, and I'm gonna do my self-portrait in front of you guys, so that's gonna be fun too. And I cannot wait to see your portrait. So before we begin this, before we begin this, I really want you guys, while you're doing your self-portrait, to really think about what's important to you, what things you are learning right now, what things you're feeling right now, and really just inject that into your painting because it's gonna feel so good to get that out and put a lot of love into yourself. So we're gonna do that next, okay? Is everybody ready for that? Yeah, or do you want me to wait a little bit so you can finish your bear or your object? Let me just ask the ladies over at the Jube. So you guys want uh, two minutes into, before we start our next one? That works totally too. 
while you're doing that, I'll show you, I'll show you. Uh, so these were some drag queens that I did of bad portraits. This is uh, maybe another workshop we'll do, but I took a bunch of the portraits and I cut them out and I glued them onto panel. So I think that might be the next step. Hey, all right. So as you guys are finishing up, please just send your questions to Jube School and send, send your paintings to Jube School. We want to see those. I hope you guys are doing okay out there. So let's see, I just took a selfie. Uh, let me just pull this up. So I just took this selfie. There you go, you can see it a little bit, right? So I'm gonna use this for my bad portrait. Now, before we start that, I want to kind of show you guys what I do with the with the faces if you don't want to use the continuous line. Now, my my worry about doing this is that it puts you in a space where you want to think too much and then you want it to be perfect. That's not what we want to do. We really 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 want to just let our our lines and our mark making out so that we can see it and see, you know, that authentic piece of ourselves that maybe we don't get to see all the time. So if I'm doing a portrait, I usually cut it into different sections. So I'll do the continuous line in this area and in this hair area. Then I'll move down and do the continuous line in this area, just so I can see that the sections are going together. So I'll show you guys a quick example of that. I'll show you guys a quick, quick example of that using um, another picture on my phone, just so you guys can see kind of what that looks like. So this is a wonderful teacher in Calgary. I don't know if any of you know, but there you go, you can see him. So if I were to break it down into sections, I would break it down into the hat to the forehead and then the eyes to the nose and then underneath. So I'll show you very quickly what that looks like. So as you're getting ready for your self portrait, finding that picture that you really love. So as you see, I did the hat, one continuous line, and then I'm gonna go down into his glasses and his eyes. So as I go into his eyes, I'm just following his nose and over. I'm still not looking at the page because I want that authentic line. So there you go and then go up into his eyebrows and kind of up there. And there, there's another section. So then you're gonna build your face kind of like that. So let's get our self portraits ready. Here, I can show you a closer bit of that. Let's get our self portraits ready. Um, and we can get ready to go. So I see a few questions coming in. You guys are asking, how can we splatter without paint? So that's a really interesting question. I think, you know, you can, if you have any washable markers, if you're using washable markers, you can take some washable markers and water and use some splatter that way. You can also, if you're using felt markers, you can just splatter water on it and then it will bleed some of the color. Um, and if not, then there must be another way. Let me think about that and get back to you guys. <laughs> Okay, another question I have is, are you teaching more this summer? I will be doing lots of these workshops uh, quite often. I'll be going over my landscaping paintings and different projects that I like to do. I'm also doing a craft a day on Facebook Live. So if your kids are looking for something to do or if you need them to do something, I have tons of crafts available. I'll send those over to Jube School and you guys can all head to Jube School and find that content there. So I'm just gonna pull up my self portrait. I'm gonna kind of zoom in a little bit on my face. And if everybody's ready, I'm just gonna start going. So like I said before, I like to start at the top of the head. So I'm gonna start with the hair here, okay? So I start with that hairline there and I, I approximate the, the space between the shape size there. So I assume that that's gonna look the same as that. So I'm gonna start there. And I'm just gonna not be very precious about it. 
just kind of go into the hair and go up. The beauty about the hair is it kind of just gives you a, a mark to go by for the shape of the head, but you can always add more. So my phone's in the way there. Uh, and then we're gonna go down like that. So hair is quite easy to do and you can always shift it, right? So then we're, I'm gonna go into the eyes. So as you can see, my forehead kind of goes there and I'm gonna go into the eyebrow. So you can spot check to see if your pen is where you want that shape to be, but just don't make sure you don't lift your pen because that's the, the thing that allows your truth to come out. So as you can see, we're gonna just keep going there and I can already tell my hair isn't long enough. So we'll just fix that in the end. And that's the beauty of, of that portrait. It's not precious, you know? I think we spend so much time in our lives trying to be precious. So that Hi everyone, we're trying to scramble and get Mandy back online here for us. She just cut out. We'll get her up and running. Sorry she said about she's that. coming right back. Does anybody have any questions they want us to pass on to Mandy now in this part of the workshop? If you do, pop them into the chat on YouTube. If you don't have a YouTube account and you can't communicate to us that way, feel free to check us out on all of our social medias. We're at Jube School on Instagram. Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, so you can communicate to us in any of those ways and we'll get those questions to Mandy right away. She is close to being back. How's everyone doing? <laughs> Don't forget to send us your portraits when you're done. We're trying to keep our live feeds going on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> oh, um, somebody asked a question um, that Karen, you and I can speak to. Somebody was asking um, yeah. if you're constantly messing up, how do you fix it? Uh, and that's the whole point of bad portraits is messing up and embracing it and making it part of what you're working on, which I totally feel you is the hardest part. Um, Absolutely. So you just, you make it part of it. That's what Mandy's talking about, making your mark and leaving your mark. That's what she's talking about. It's these beautiful mistakes that give our creations um, character and a lot of personality. So yeah, work with those mistakes and just keep going. Hi, hi, I'm here, I'm here. Hey, Miss Mandy. Hey, hey. Back. Yay. Hi, technology. Hi, <laughs> that was so weird, you guys, I'm so sorry. Okay, so I don't know when it cut out, so we're just gonna start that again, okay? Does that work? Absolutely, great. Yeah, How, I'm going how is everybody to... doing? Uh, everyone's, everyone's doing, doing good. good. Mandy, there was a question about um, what do you do if you keep messing up? And then somebody else just asked, 
asked, uh, is there an advantage to using watercolor crayons if you were working with young artists? So if you can answer those two questions before you get you started, betcha. that'd be great. Yeah, okay, so before I get started, um, Yes, I think there's an advantage to using the watercolor crayons. I know my five-year-old loves them um, more than my 14-year-old does. So, so I think the beauty in that is watching the transformation between the solid of the crayon to paint. I think for anyone younger, that's that's so cool, right? And if you want to get the splatter out of those crayons, um, then you're just going to add a bunch of water to that pigment line of the crayon and grab the pigment out of there with your brush and then splatter that way. Um, so that's that's a great, great thing to use. Uh, and the other question was, what if I do if I keep messing up? There is no messing up. So that's one thing that I really, really want us to all work on is is there's no there is no such thing as messing up. It's 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 our expression. And it's everything that we are right now, everything we've gone through and everything that we want to let go of. So in that term, all of your pieces are just incredible and really, really beautiful. And when you start looking at your work that way, there is no messing up. It's just your creation. And that's really special. So we're going to start with this bad portrait. I'm just going to make sure that I'm I'm not frozen here and everything's okay. Um, because uh, on my end, Carly's a bit frozen. So before I begin that, I'm just gonna check in with everything and make sure it's going okay. And we're gonna start that again, just because I'm not sure when. You're good to when, me. When Andy. I cut it. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, you're good so, to me. I, un I turned my camera and, and mic off. Oh, nice. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, okay. you're good. So as you can see, we're going to start that again. I'm going to start again at the top of the head. I know you guys saw me lift my pen. It's it's kind of up to you when you want to lift just to move over or if you want that continuous line. If this is your first time doing this, I really, really suggest you keep the continuous line. For me, it's become a little more muscle memory because I've done so many of them. But if you keep trying with that continuous line, you're really going to like excavate what your true original lines are and the my favorite thing about that is just nobody else has that yours is different than mine and mine is different than yours and and the beauty in that line is so spectacular and and so that's kind of what we're trying to cultivate here so again we're just going to start at the top of the head we're going to go down oh my pen just kind of flipped <laughs> And we're gonna go all the way over and then I'm gonna move to the other side. So it's obvious, it's not precious. We're kind of just throwing our energy in there. I do see my ear poking out. So I'm gonna just quickly put that in. When you do get into the second step, you really can define those shapes and really bring out what you want. So now we're gonna go down into the forehead and I'm gonna move over into the eye. So, I know that some of us, it's really hard to look at ourselves. I know that I still make a weird face every time I look in the mirror. <laughs> but I really suggest us, you know, deciding to change that a little bit over this time. We are all so exceptional and we have so much capacity and magic and beauty and wonder in us all. And I really, I just really wish that people could see that when they looked in the reflection instead of things that they don't think that they like, because all of those things are making you unique and nobody else can take that, you know? So I think that's a really special thing. So as you can see, we're going all the way down. And I think if we do this again, guys, we will do a workshop where I show you without the continuous line, but this is definitely the fundamentals to, uh, to bad portraits. So as you can see, I'm not lifting my pen at all. And I'm just kind of going, as I follow my eyes on the page, I'm going, or I'm moving my wrist. And so then we go down and then we're gonna go up. I think I need a little bit more hair on this side. So we'll just kind of do that. And there's kind of the fast and dirty of, of my self portrait. So now with step two, I'm going to go in and I'm going to start coloring in those shapes. 
So, and I know some of us are, think it's a mistake if it's not perfect or if it's not, even if one eye is here and one eye is here, but that's, that's the character. That's what's so beautiful. So, so just bear with me and keep it. And if you want to keep working on it, just keep trying one every day. It's a great way to kind of have a bit of meditation. And it's a great way to explore your own marks, you know? So we're going to keep going on here. Just going to make sure. Oh, someone, so someone has asked why a Sharpie. So Sharpies. I was in a place when I was creating where I was a little bit, let me answer this question to your face. I was in a place where I always felt like I had one foot here and one foot was like holding me back. So I decided what I'm scared of most is doing portraits, uh, using watercolor and using something permanent that you can't erase just so that I could get comfortable with my marks. And so I knew that I couldn't, you know, erase it and, and turn away from it. I had to face it and discover what I loved about it. So that's why Sharpie. I love Sharpies. I think we should try and do most of our drawings in Sharpies because it just forces that safety net to not be there. And you can really start seeing what your creations are. So as we're going through this, I'm just gonna pick in some of these. So like you can see, there's a ton of overlapping shapes. That's my favorite thing. So we're just gonna go through a bunch of those and I'd love to answer your questions while we do this. Um, I love bringing out the eyes. There's something about the eyes that makes, like really makes it come to life. So I usually do that first. So just in case the drawing is like waiting to come alive, I've, uh, I've given them their life. Um, so there you go. We're just gonna fill in a little bit more of these. I really like the, the lines and the cross, cross hatching. And I also love the solid color, but I've seen lots of artists and students do like dots, polka dots and cross hatches and all kinds of patterns. And it really is interesting. So don't feel like you, you can't do any of those things. You can do any of them. Someone is asking if I will teach a jube school online this summer. And I think, well, if this is what we are doing together, I would love to, you guys. I hope a bunch of my students are on that line right now. I miss all my girls. I miss you guys. So if you are there, please send me a note and send Jube School your pictures. Mandy, what is your favorite TV show? Oh, you guys, that is a tough one. So... My five-year-old's favorite TV show right now is Boss Baby Back in Business. My teenager's favorite TV show right now is Clone Troopers. My favorite TV show, it's terrible, but I keep re-watching Friends over and over. <laughs> I have a bit of a crush on Ross and his jokes. <laughs> so anytime I need any kind of laughter, I throw on Friends. It's pretty boring, I know, but I just can't get enough of it, you guys. Uh, here's another question. Can you do uh, their portraits, a eh? plug your bad portrait? Yes, I should do friends portraits. That's a great idea. I, uh, I should. You would think I would have a room full of Ross portraits, but I don't. That's a great idea. So I'll post those on Jube School when those are done. Here's another one. What kind of paint is there? Oh yeah, I, I do custom portraits all the time, you guys. So anytime you want a portrait, send me your picture and I do portraits. Um, what kind of paint is your favorite paint? Well, this is a tough question. So there's a lot of great, beautiful watercolor paint out there. I come from the idea that uh, use what you have and use what you can. So if you don't have a lot of money or you don't have a lot of supplies, that's okay. Create with whatever you can find. Don't go out there and buy really expensive things until you know what you like. I loved the Crayola ones. The sad thing about the Crayola ones is they, they lose their pigment in the sun, but their color is so fun to play with. So if you are working with kids, 
and you just really want to play with color the Crayola ones are inexpensive and they're great to use um, Kensington Art Supplies is an amazing store they do delivery at your door right now and they have all kinds of watercolor paints so I would suggest just going online and checking them out I also love for my acrylic painting I love golden fluid it kind of gives you a bit more, um, well, just fluidity. So, so it's really easy to spread and play with. So now we're gonna paint. And so now I want you guys to really just express yourself in any way you want. I, um, I used to be really against using like beiges or browns or any of those kind of colors, but uh, use what you like. Like this is all about your expression. So what I like to do, is I like to take some of my favorite color and put it in those areas where the shadows are on your face. So I'll show you guys here. So like when here and here and the edges of your face and under your lips and under your nose, there's a lot of shadow areas. So we're gonna just do that with this, my favorite, favorite color. It's like an orangey red. And I just think it just pops, really brings out really unique feeling i think i love it so as you can see i'm just kind of going along the edges and where those those shadows would be so there's going to be a shadow under your lip there's going to be a shadow by your nose and there's going to be those shadows on the edges and also on your ears So there you go. So then I love to play with kind of yellows and reds too. So we're gonna do one side with some yellow and really blend it in with that orange and red. Okay, we got some more questions. Where do you find inspiration to create? Well, for me, I, there is so much inspiration out there. I. Uh, I have gone through a lot of things in my life and I, because of it, I have a thing called PTSD. And so art for me became kind of my therapy and my friend. And so the good thing about bad portraits for me was when I didn't know what, what to paint, because I felt like I, I just didn't know what I wanted to paint or like what my subject should be. There's an endless amount of beautiful and great people in the world. And so I thought that was a perfect thing for me because not only do they inspire me as a person, but they also inspire me for content. And then from there, I started just painting what I felt. So I, I have these contemporary paintings and these landscapes, and I just had never really seen a lot of Alberta landscapes in a contemporary abstract way. So that was really inspiring for me. And then I think just anything that gets you excited, if it's animals, if it's just color, just abstract color, just anything that that you're attracted to, just start playing. There's no there is no hurt in playing and trying to find your real what you really love, you know? And it can change, it can change always. And that's good. And another question, do I have a YouTube channel? I don't have a YouTube channel, but I am in the works of a YouTube channel. So uh, I have a craft every day. And I also have on my website, I have coloring pages for your kids every day too. Um, because I know being a mom and working full time, it's pretty tough to, um, to balance that out. So I have a ton of content for all of you teachers and parents out there that just need, um, you know, a little bit of extra projects for your kids to have fun with, to learn some neat things with and to be inspired by. So head over to Stobo Art and you can find all those there. I will tell Jube School as soon as my YouTube channel is open uh, what it is and you guys can find it there. But if you guys want to ever ask me any questions or send me any of your art, please send, send it to Jube School or at Bad Portraits on Instagram and I, can, I will get back to you right away. So here's another question. My kids want me to say you're really good at this and they like your portraits. Oh, thanks guys. Well, I can't wait to see yours. So I really wanted to show you with this one 
that we're using the entire page, that it was one continuous line, and that it's, you know, it's not perfect, but it's there's beauty there. And and I just really, really encourage you all to, you know, remember that you're full of you're full of that. And that is the coolest thing about us all. So as you can see, I've got some bleeding here. So I'm just gonna tap that because I still wanna see the face. And then I'm just gonna put some, I think some burgundy in the in my shirt just to contrast it with the blue. And then you guys, what's next? It's splatter. Oh, here's another question. How can we use pencil crayons? Our teacher said we can use them. Okay. So with pencil crayons, guys, you're just going to do the same kind of thing with the color. So just take a darker color and put it in those shadow areas. And then you want where the light hits you. So in the forehead and on the cheeks and right here above the eyes and a little bit here and on the chin, that's where the light is going to hit. So you want to pick a color in your pencil crayons that are a little bit lighter. So you're going to put the lighter colors here and here and here and the darker colors along the edges and by the nose. And then you just don't worry about splatter at this point. So you just want to shade in those pencil crayons. And, and, and then you'll still get your beautiful marks out of that. It's just not going to look like the paint, but pencil crayons are perfectly good to use. And I love them because you can really, really use shade well with them. So I really want to see those pencil crayons ones. Okay, another question. What is the longest time you've drawn with one line? Oh, that's a great question. So back in 2012, Calgary was the cultural capital of Canada. And I had the honor of going to Ottawa on Canada Day and painting a mural on Parliament Hill. And so for that mural, I did one long continuous line of multiple portraits and it took me 12 hours. So that was definitely a wonderful experience and a very neat experiment. So that's another place to find inspiration too. It's like, think of these experiments and try them. Why not? If you're bored or you wanna find some inspiration, just start playing around and seeing what you can find. So then I'm gonna just take that orange that I love so much. We're gonna splatter a little bit more. If you get splatter on areas that you don't want it, want it you can just grab it with some paper towel, no problem. I like to leave it because, you know, it happened in the moment and I, I'm that kind of girl. So there you guys go. We're almost done here. So there's my self portrait, one continuous line. I hope you guys really, really enjoy it. I'll send, uh, I'll send a picture once it dries to Juby School, but you can take a look at that. So with that, another thing for the pencil crayons though, if you wanna cross hatch, so let's, uh, let's see if I have a pencil crayon kicking around. I don't, but if you wanna cross hatch, so you wanna like get the, you can get texture if you go one way and then go the other way on top and then you get a different bit of texture. So you guys will just experiment with those crayons. Oh, and the last thing you all have to do is sign your name. That is your art and it is worth so much. So I hope you had a great time at Jube School. Thank you guys so much for doing this with me. This was so fun and I can't wait to see everything that you're doing. Thanks, Mandy, that was awesome. Uh, thank you. So we hope that you will share all of your bad portraits with us, all your drawings. We will put them up on our Instagram and Facebook and Twitter accounts. Um, but we also want to give a special thanks to Global TV in Edmonton and Calgary for partnering with Duke School for their family zone. Remember that you can also follow us at Jube School on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. If, does anyone have any final questions before we go? 
Let me go check in with the YouTube. And uh, if there's any questions, I'll let you know. There were a lot of questions about where this video is going to be available after. And I can let you know that it'll be available here on YouTube, all of our social medias, our website, as well as the Global Family Zone. So you'll be able to see this video and do this lesson as many times as you want. Uh, let me see what's going on here. Oh, a lot of people are like, oh no, is this for Mother's Day? You can absolutely give it to your mom. You can do a different one. You now know how to do this process. Um, lots of people are saying thank you, uh, Mandy, for making this possible and for all of your uh, inspiring words and story. Lots of, yeah, lots of those. Does anybody have any questions? Let me ask right now in YouTube. Any okay. more questions yeah. for Mandy or to school? Well, Karen, can we talk a bit about the summer Jupe school and what that experience is looking like? Absolutely. So we're planning three weeks of summer camp online where uh, participants can actually pick and choose what type of workshops they want to participate in. So we will have a special effects makeup intensive. We'll have a variety of visual arts as well mask making, juggling, hopefully Alberta Ballet will come on board and we'll do some warm ups with them. So we're really trying to bring in all of our artists in Alberta to work with us this Amazing. summer. Yeah. Amazing. We think it'll okay. be pretty cool. I've got some questions from the YouTube right now. Uh, the one question is, Mandy, what do you do when you don't feel like painting? Okay. That is a tough one. So when I don't feel like painting, I make sure I start painting. So it's really easy as an artist to uh, get lost in those feelings and to not know what, what you want to do and, and kind of get lost in your head that way. The act of doing is really where creation starts. So if you're not feeling it, you know, maybe just mix up what material you're using, but but try because you don't want to get in that rut where you're you're not feeling creative because you are creative. So it's there. You just have to kind of push through it, just like just like anything else, you know. That's awesome. Uh, that there's another question. It's for everyone. Uh, when is our next Jube School live, or are we doing it again? <laughs> ah, what a good question. So May 19th will be our next Jube School Live with an artist from Airdrie, Jay Benoit. She does a guided drawing very similar to Mandy's um, with watercolor and Sharpie as well. But she will be doing a guided owl drawing with us on May 19th. I've got a question for Mandy. Mandy, have you done pet portraits? And if so, is drawing animals the same process? Yes, so I do many pet, pet uh, portraits. I've done them for years. Uh, it's the same process. The interesting part is the shapes are a lot different. So instead of starting at the top of the head, I start at the eye and I do the nose to the eye and then go to the head. Just because they're, they're spatial, like they're just, it's a different uh, shape. So that's kind of the struggles there. I find cats a lot more difficult than dogs, but it's fun to explore. So that's another thing, you know, finding finding pets or photos or or objects of anything that you think is cool, just start trying, you know, and then you'll kind of find what you like doing, what you don't like doing. Uh, question about pencil crayons. If we do use pencil crayons, do we need a paintbrush? <laughs> no, you don't need a paintbrush. If they are water soluble pencil crayons, though, you, you do, you can use a paintbrush and really blend those colors. So the blending of, of pencil crayons is really, really beautiful. If you don't have water soluble pencil crayons, you can use, you know, those, um, those like smudge sticks, you can use those to blend. Mm -hmm. And it really makes it look like paint. And so that's a really wonderful thing to do. If you don't have those sticks, you can, you can put Kleenex on your thumb and do the same thing with your thumb. Just kind of use what you have and experiment with it. That's all, that's all art is, is just trying and trying and trying and until you find what you feel your voice is. 
Awesome. Uh, Mandy, have you ever drawn your pet? <laughs> Do you have a pet? And have I you don't have it? a pet. <laughs> <laughs> so my little guy is really allergic to dogs and my mom is very allergic to animals. So we've never really had a pet. Although with COVID, we did buy an aquarium but we're still trying to get the like it all yeah. working working well for the fish. So we still don't have any fish. We just have this <laughs> aquarium sitting in those. So when I do have fish, I'll draw those and post them to uh, Juice School. <laughs> uh, Karen, this is an organizational question. Uh, will the May May nineteenth be at two p.m. as well? Yes, question? it will. May nineteenth at two p.m. We'll be back live with Jay Benoit. Awesome. Uh, yep. Mandy, who would be your dream bad portrait to create? Hmm. Oh, this is a tough one. I've been so lucky in, in my life to have been able to create portraits of so many people that I, that I love. Um, and right now it's kind of shifted. So it's, it was more like a, a pat on the back and a humor just trying to bring a smile to someone's face uh, in the past. And now it's, it's really the focus is on celebrating good, good people and finding those positive moments during this really hard time. Mm -hmm. So the ability to be able to um, do Dr. Hinshaw and all of these incredible leaders that we have right now are frontline workers and, and all the people that are really doing incredible work right now during this uh, this wild world we're in, being able to honor them through art has been so special. Um, so it's kind of taken a, a bit of a shift and I, I love it because I, I get to really dig down and find those, those good stories that, that, you know, those stories of positivity that we all really need right now. And it also is acknowledging this hard work from so many. So I, I just, uh, I feel so blessed that I get to do that right now. Um, but as far as like, I don't know, celebrities or I guess, I guess my biggest crush would be um, Ryan Reynolds. So maybe him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so good. Um, we just got a question <laughs> pop up on Twitter. Uh, people are asking how people can submit their photos to us. So you can share them on social media. We're at Jube School on every platform, or you can email us. The email address is jubeschool at albertajubileesociety.ca. So you can share them that way. Uh, okay, I've got more questions. Hashtag. Jube oh, yeah. You can hashtag also... Jube School Art. So you can take us that way as well. Um, someone mentioned that I wasn't moving and I was frozen. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mandy, what was your favorite? Uh, okay, this is a two part question from one person. What has been the favorite portrait that you've done and who are your favorite artists? Oh, that's a great question. Both great questions. So, hmm, I think in the beginning, there was uh, definitely uh, like iconic portraits that I did that, that helped my career or was a moment in my career. And so those were very special. Like the first time I made one that I just was because I saw it, I didn't know the person. They had just sent it to me, and but the portrait was so beautiful, and it had so many mistakes, and it was just so beautiful that it was the first time I was like, oh, I can do this. But then, as time gone on, has gone on, I've done you know over thirty thousand portraits at this at this point, and uh, and they're all so unique because I get stories from everyone, but. I think recently the Canada's Walk of Fame, I layered augmented reality stories on top of the portraits. And so it kind of told their story of their career and being able to highlight Mr. Dress Up uh, and his story and being able to recreate kind of the opening <laughs> sequence of, of him and then watching his grandchildren see the portrait. That was a, that was a very special moment. So yeah, but there's so many, I, I'm just, I'm very lucky to, to, be able to experience, you know, life through portraits. Awesome. Do we have um, any? And then what was the two, what oh, was yeah. the second question? Okay, so this, yes, we do have more questions. Yeah. Uh, and Karen, or sorry, Mandy, uh, who are your favorite artists? Who are my favorite artists? Okay, so I have so many artists that I really quite love, like, you know, Jackson Pollock was uh, one when I was younger, just his freedom, and his, you know, just shifting the way that we look at art was very interesting. Uh, David Hockney, I just love 
his composition and his design is so incredible. Local artists that are amazing, obviously Chris Cran is the father of, of art in Alberta slash Canada. Um, I remember being in a cat and learning about uh, Chris Cran's commission. It was like a giant commission for this oil company and he painted, <laughs> and I get, I get commissions quite a lot and I just love his guts, but he painted himself receiving the check from the person that commissioned the painting <laughs> and that's what he did for his and I remember reading that and being like oh my gosh art can be so funny and interactive and interesting and cool and so he's definitely someone I I look to Mark Dicey's also in Calgary he does these incredible abstract paintings um, that are beautiful Katie Green I think she has been on Jube School or she will be one day she's um, she's a little ball of light that is constantly transforming what she's doing she's she's quite exceptional um, yeah so those are those are I think a handful of artists that I, I really love but there you know there's just so many so what I like to do is really really go through all of like Instagram and Twitter and find those hashtags of contemporary art and art or new artists and try and really ingest some new artwork every day just to always keep my mind expanding and seeing what other people are doing and and as soon as you start to engage in in the world and artists that way you really get inspired and you always have it sparks some kind of idea so I really that's another maybe uh, answer to when you're not feeling like painting, maybe just dive into looking at what other artists stories are, what other artists work is. And I guarantee you after you do that, you're going to be inspired to, to make something. I have a whole like page of questions still. Our friends oh, cool. at Deep Sing really, 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 really wants to know if you have, could have a pet, what would you have and would you want to draw it? They've asked several <laughs> times, so I gotta get you okay. to answer okay. what pet yes. would you have. <laughs> so I I grew up every summer. We went like five hours north of of here, uh, north of Edmonton, to a cabin, and there was toads there. And I I had an obsession with all kinds of frogs and toads. And I think in grade five, like my whole room had like every kind of frog or toad item that I have could, could have collected just surrounded by me. So I think I would probably have a frog or a toad. Is that a lame answer? But yes, I would definitely draw it. I, I love them so much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I always wanted a dog, but we've never had one. So now that I have kids, I am way more comfortable raising kids than a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so I think probably I'll probably stick with frogs and toads and yes I will draw it I will look one up and I'll try and draw one I'll send it to you so you guys can see it so uh, good. there's a lot of questions about when did you start painting how did you get into it okay. uh, and what made you choose painting okay so I um I always loved to draw I went through a lot of trauma as a child and uh, I think through that and just I just yeah, have a, a different way of learning and I think through that I felt like I could express myself with visuals a lot easier than language um, and so I always drew and then I all I just dreamed of being a Disney animator when I was young mm -hmm. and I would just draw and I would take all the the background cells and the characters and draw the backgrounds and then on like clear paper or on saran wrap or anything I could find would would draw the characters and then put it on and then it was like an authentic cell and I was like this is amazing and then I became really ill when I was um, 13 and um, and after that it was just a really hard time I had lost all my hair and I couldn't walk and I was just very sick and then after that my mom I couldn't really do anything but be with my mom after I got out of the hospital and she started taking me to her painting class. And through that, I just, I just fell in love with painting. At the time it was oil paint and there was such an interesting thing about oil because it kind of feels like you're sculpting, but you're painting. So it's a bit of a two way street with the medium and with yourself. And so you kind of react to what it's doing. And I love, I just loved that idea so much. And then when I had um, Jack, 
I was renting apartments or in places that I couldn't use oil paint. So I thought the only thing that, that washes off of things is watercolor paint. So how <laughs> can I engage with watercolor paint that is really, um, that, I, that I'm really interested in and, and that's challenging and fun. And so that's kind of where bad portraits came from and why watercolor. Um, but yeah, I think, did I answer that question? Yes. <laughs> or <was there> okay. <laughs> um, Karen, when is summer dupe camp starting online? Ooh, that is going to start the first week in August. So we'll hold awesome. three weeks in August. Awesome. Uh, oh, we'll Mandy. A surprise event. I don't know. Ooh. <laughs> Mandy, uh, there's been a couple questions of, have you ever done a portrait of Jube School? Oh, well, I have recently done a portrait of Karen <laughs> that she just got in the mail last week. Mm -hmm. And Carly, I was able to do a beautiful anniversary <laughs> gift of, and I loved it. But then that one was different because that was a, acrylic right on panel yeah. yeah yeah um but we should we should do uh one of the whole the jubilee in the school mm -hmm. and the kids we should just go for it you've drawn my face <laughs> several times in several class times. <laughs> as well <laughs> yeah um yeah. oh mandy there's some personal questions that folks want to know about you what okay. is your favorite food uh and your favorite disney princess oh <laughs> okay uh, my favorite food, uh, pickles and pickles and cheese. I yeah. eat pickles. I eat way too many pickles and cheese at, late at night. It's, it's terrible. Um, but it's <laughs> so delicious, you guys. Uh, so that's a fun one. I also like anything. Like I love, I just love food. I don't, I don't have any restrictions. I just will eat anything and enjoy it and be thankful for it. So, um, but yeah, pickles. If I had to live off of one thing, it would be pickles, which is weird, isn't it? The pickles no, are frogs. That's awesome. <laughs> pickles and, and then <laughs> what was the second question? Was oh my favorite Disney princess. princess. Mm -hmm. I I think Moana. I love Moana so much. Yeah. Yeah. She's so cool and fierce and like brave and strong. I love her. What about you, Karen? What's your Disney princess? Oh my goodness. That's a tough one. I know. I think I got to think about this. It might be Aurora. Oh, mine's yeah. Ariel. Uh, mm. Mandy, there's a question. Who inspired you to draw? Hmm. That is a good question. I don't, I, well, when I started drawing, I was really young. And I think I started drawing just because I was restless in my mind and it kind of helps my mind chill out a bit. And so I would just like doodle lines and circles and patterns and, and then I'd start looking at shapes and then I'd start trying to draw uh, just some things. And then when they started, when people started being like, whoa, that's cool. I was like, oh, sweet. <laughs> and then I just kept drawing more and more. But uh, I think, you know, well, obviously Walt Disney and, and, uh, comics and just all of those interesting ways to tell stories that weren't kind of you know the usual way to tell a story and and it was with style and with expression and I just loved that so I really wanted to try that so I think it was just yeah just discovering that illustrations and books like Robert Munch and and Jillian Jiggs and all of those books, those are Jillian definitely, Jiggs. I know Jillian Jiggs is so good. I yeah. loved like finding those books that had drawings that I was like, wow, I love that you can tell a story with an image. It's just, it was just so interesting. So I just, yeah, I think, I think all of those little bits of, of moments during life really inspired me to, to draw. Um, do you remember what the first thing you ever painted was? That's been a question that's been asked a few times. Oh, yeah. The first thing I ever like really painted was, well, that is a tough question, you guys. The first thing I painted when I was younger was like, do you guys know that Marilyn Monroe, um, mm -hmm. it's kind of like four squares and they each have a different color background mm -hmm. and then they have her face in it. So I did a really bad cartoon version of that. And then I did my dad's <laughs> face. 
<laughs> on the top. I still have it. I'll have to send you to school. But uh, so that, that was probably one of the first times I used paint. And then the, the first thing that we did, I know, after I was sick was like a very quintessential Bob Ross like mountains and lake and the fir tree and the moonlight yeah. kind of landscape. And I think it was monochromatic. Like I think it was just blues and whites and blacks. And I'll try and dig that out for you guys. But that it's, it's fun to try, you know? And another thing I really suggest is like, I love painting with a knife or painting with things that like it gives a little bit, it loses a little bit of control from you to the canvas. And so you get really interesting texture and lines and things that you could never intentionally do. And I love that. So if you're kind of not knowing what to do, just grab a different tool and try using that and see, see what comes out of it. Cool. Um, there, uh, have you ever driven, or driven, have you ever drawn your kids? A lot of people want to know, do you draw your children? Yeah, so <laughs> I I struggle drawing my kids so much. I don't know what it is. I think it's because I know them so well that it like it never quite matches. But yes, I've drawn them many times. My teenagers asked me to stop doing it <laughs> now, <laughs> and my little guy still likes it. So they, we have lots of portraits of each other for sure, but not many of me. They won't draw me. <laughs> <laughs> um let me see okay there's a question this is a this is a big question somebody's asking um how maybe i can rephrase it do you have any tips as to how to be happy in a time like this right now in the world uh yeah i think um you know i think it's really important that we any emotion that you have or anything you're going through right now, it's okay to feel. Yeah. Uh, you can just sit with it and just let yourself feel it. I think that's a, an important thing and it's okay, whatever it is, we're all feeling all of those things. Mm -hmm. I think um, for me to hold on to happiness right now is, is looking for those positive stories and those good people and, and they're everywhere. There's so many people doing beautiful things right now. So um, shifting focus to find find them is really helpful. And then really looking at the things that you like about um, about creating or about yourself and and doing those activities. So if that's reading a book or exercising or having a nap or drawing or painting or doing, you know, finding those things that just let your brain relax for a little bit and um, and just gives it a little bit of space and ease instead of all that pressure of what's going on. I think if you just carve out some time to do that every day, it helps. Totally. Um, there's a question here. What is the largest painting you've ever created? Okay, it's the largest painting. Uh, there's been a few. So I, I get to do a lot of um, painting and artwork for movies and television and, uh, and it's because they need rights to images and they, it's usually a really hard thing to do. So they always just call me last minute and ask me if I can, you know, make this thing. So <laughs> yeah, I got to do <laughs> these like 15 feet by 30 feet canvases for a, for a Christmas movie with Kim Cattrall from Sex and the City. That was a fun one. I'm, I'm currently working on a secret installation and uh, those pieces are uh, around there too, like 13 feet by 26 feet. So those are very, very huge pieces. Um, and then walls, I have done a lot of murals. So those are always a lot bigger, but you kind of look at them in a different way than canvas. So it's kind of depending on uh, on that, but walls are pretty fun. And so when you're kind of scaling your pieces up, you're just really, for a mural, you're making it less complex so that you can really see the wow factor of the shapes and smaller work, you kind of want more details. So that's kind of a fun way to look at sizing with paintings. But yeah, I love, I love giant paintings. I feel like I can walk into them while I'm making them because they're just so big and I love that feeling. I get lost and, uh, and my brain stops and I just enjoy the moment. 
Okay, I think we have time for two more questions. Uh, there's a, a burning question. How many paintings do you have? So uh, do you have personally in your home? Um, and maybe how many do you think you've done? Well, <laughs> that, <laughs> that is a hard question. So portraits I've done, um, I've done so many events and so many portraits for years. So I've done over 30,000 portraits, um, which is really exciting. As far as contemporary work, I probably do around 150 to 200 paintings a year. Wow. Um, wow. And then plus installations and commissions. I just can't help myself. I just love painting <laughs> so much. That I just have to keep, keep painting. Um, so yeah, well, quite a lot, I think. Yeah, and in my home, in our, so all the ones from like the different style of generations of paintings, I give one of the collection to my mom. So my mom has like one from each kind of segment of my life. And then in our home, we only have probably a dozen of them that I love, but then if someone loves them and wants them, I, I can't help but say, okay. And so my husband, has gotten used to falling in love with a piece that he thinks is his and then and then I sell it <laughs> <laughs> so it's constantly fluctuating <laughs> um okay this is the final question Mandy uh how has your art changed over time that is a great question so that's a bit of a multi-part answer it's changed in um in the in my ego I think I think when I was younger and and not really knowing what I, where I was going or what I was doing I was really um kind of uh frustrated if it wasn't perfect or or really needed it to be exactly what my mind saw but over the years, you get used to what that feeling is of, of that freedom and, and that beauty that you really like. And that usually never has to do with your own ego. That usually has to do with letting go and ex just having free expression. And then you kind of learn things about yourself instead of trying to put things of yourself onto something. Um, so that's a way it's changed. And then it's just changed in, in my interests. So I've explored with obviously portraits and landscapes. And then I started doing a lot of storytelling with my, with my landscapes and, and paintings. And that was a really fun way to express another layer. And now I am really involved in, uh, in technology with art in, to add another layer of storytelling or another layer of engagement. So I think just always being open to, to changing and always being open to what's out there and trying to think of how you can use it in a new way is, is a really good thing for all of us. And uh, I really try and hold on to that and always, always kind of transform my work that way. Uh, I have a quick follow-up question that was asked before that I forgot to ask. Um, <laughs> do you think any of that AR work that you've created is something that you could share with Jube School students or with Jube School classes? Yeah, definitely. I can show you guys the process. The, uh, the hard thing about augmented reality is it's a lot of time. So you guys are, are I'm essentially doing a ton of asset drawing plus the painting. And then I take those assets and I have to animate them and then put them into a 3D animation space and then put them into a software that will tell them to play, essentially play on top of the painting. And even just the rendering time of that takes a few days. So it's just a longer process, but I can definitely break down all of those segments of that process so you guys can learn and, uh, and try on your own. It's really, really fun technology. And it's just such a, a great way to tell stories. Is there an app that can help someone do that? Not at the moment. There's a few, I think, that are coming out. I know that there's Spark AR, which is on your computers. There's uh, some buddies of mine that I've been able to speak with at conferences, and they created a very user-friendly um, AR software it more is used for making kind of filters 
um, for your face instead of the storytelling interaction. I know that Apple has brought out a new AR uh, program, I believe it's called AR Kit. And it's really interesting because it goes, it kind of guides you um, step by step in very basic coding and each next uh, project is a little bit more complicated coding and then it goes to the next which is a little more complicated coding so if you're a kid out there that's really interested in that I really suggest diving in there's not a lot of people doing it right now and it is it is um, a, going to be a very big industry so I think yeah anybody that wants to to jump in there do it it's a good thing to learn and coding coding no matter what is a great thing to learn so well, we've got this time. That's a good good thing to jump into for sure. Awesome. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Mandy, That's for answering it. all of those questions. Oh, That's thanks great. for asking them. That was amazing, you guys. So, so good. Thank you, Mandy. Oh, my pleasure. You know what? For our first time going live, high fives, high tens to <laughs> everyone out there for <laughs> participating and joining us. <laughs> We will have a recording of this posted on jubileeauditorium.com on our YouTube channel. And of course, you can check out the Family Zone uh, with Global TV. It will be there as well. So have Amazing. a great afternoon, everyone. Thank yeah. you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.